This meeting is being recorded. Let me see. I think we are maybe live now, ladies. Let me just double check. Lunch. Let me see, let me see. There's always worth, a wee delay, isn't it? I know, it's always worth stuff. checking we're actually live before we start talking. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we are live. Fantastic. So good morning, everybody who's watching and anyone on catch up. So I'm Heather from One for Growth. We've got Laura from Glasgow Girls Club here. Amy from Glasgow Girls Club and Dawn from Wise Women. So, if you a bit of history, why we're here last year, myself, Laura, and Ashley from Thriving Survivors uh, hosted a panel event on women's safety. And we opened up Pandora's box. We had loads of people wanting to come on, on and speak. What was meant to be an hour's panel, we had to cut that too, but we could have talked all day. And we realized it was a campaign that we could just keep going with. Um, the week after, we did another one, a follow-up with Clyde News. Um, and afterwards, we decided, actually, this is a campaign that we want to keep going and through 2022. So here we are. And the plan is to have a panel event every single month. And we've got 11 different subjects we're going to be talking about. Because when we did our first panel, we realised that there are so many aspects to women's safety. And... Uh, history as well that each one needed its own panel because I felt really rude I kept cutting people off so we could go on to the next subject when we were trying to cover so much in one panel so this is how we've come up with this year-long project so every single month we'll have a panel event um, and at the very end on Friday the 9th of December 2022 we'll have an actual face-to-face -face event with everyone that's been involved um, and that is the final day of the 16 days of campaign um, so it marks the end of the, that campaign as well um, and at that event we will then uh, introduce the paper that we will put to the Scottish Government and that will be a collaboration of everything we've learnt, all the asks for the year that have come and yeah it'll be interesting to see what that will include after we've done 12 events. So the purpose in the campaign um, is, a, is, is a collaboration, it's not just Driver Survivors, One for Growth or Glasgow Girls Club, this is to bring all men and women organisations um, and campaigns together for a much bigger voice. Um, there's so many amazing people out there doing great things and we want to bring it all together to have a much bigger voice. Um, different campaigns and organisations will cover different things and we want to bring all of that together. Um, so we have renamed our campaign from Women's Safety to so what, but what if? And it's a gender-based approach to women's safety. So as we started discussing what the topic's gonna to be, we went down so many different avenues and we did want it to be, um, to really clear that it welcomes everybody into the discussion. And the so what, but what if came from a focus group of survivors, at driving survivors. Um, and it came around from a discussion where, so what? You know, so what if we need apps to keep women's safety? So what if this? So what if that? But really, what the survivors are going, but what if? I thought that was brilliant. It's a positive message. So what we will be uh, trying to gather through the year as well is people's, but what ifs? Yeah. So if we can, uh, at the end of each of our panel events, ask you, but what if? Do you know what? If you could have a positive outcome from the discussions we have, if you could have an ask, as to what next, what's a positive outcome that could come from the so what, then what we want to do is gather all these what ifs. And that's people on the panel are asking, but also people watching. If you've got a what if, then we'd like to hear it. So that's an introduction to our campaign for the year. And um, so we're going to go on to speaking to our first panel guests. So we have uh, Don Fife, who is a strategic development worker from Wise Women, and Amy Rowe. Ryu, who is the Chief Addict Officer from Glasgow Girls Club. So, not to get confused, we've got Laura from Glasgow Girls Club, 
and Amy from Glasgow Girls Club. So, and Amy, you said something brilliant on WhatsApp. It's Girls Club Unite. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> I love it. Girls <laughs> Club, wise women, we're all united. Yeah, the Glow Girl Club and the Go Girl Club, just like both of those. Yes. That's all that we need to be doing, isn't it? <laughs> go Girl, you go girl. <laughs> I love that. Okay, so um, we're going to be discussing uh, your project that you guys are working on together. So it's Equally Safe, Scotland's Strategy for Preventing and Eradicating Violence Against Women and Girls. So let's start off by introductions. Amy, tell us a bit more about yourself and what you do. Thanks, Heather, and thanks to, to you guys for inviting us on to the panel and, and, you know, just really creating this space for such an important conversation. We're absolutely delighted that you are that you are heading this up and excited to see what comes out of it at the end of the year. So thanks firstly for, for doing this, um, so, so needed. Uh, as you said, I'm the, well, I'm the founder and the director of the Glasgow Girls Club. Um, we are a social enterprise, we're a non-profit. Uh, we've been going for six years, seven years. We're actually founded based on a model um, that I discovered in New York, New York City, in the Lower East Side of Manhattan. Um, I'd actually moved to New York uh, 2012 and I discovered this amazing organisation that we're just doing fantastic work for girls and young women that were based in the Lower East Side. So it was a, lot, it was a project basically, sort of Alphabet City um, and just a lot, a lot of uh, sort of ethnic minority groups and the, the girls with incar and incar incarcerated parent, um, lots of sort of issues around sort of addictions and things like that. So um, they had created this space that was basically, they, they were just about to launch the venue. It was after 20 years of of the inception of this amazing venue. It was tw a $20 million venue with three floors for the girls, 10 floors of social housing. Um, and it was all about, you know, really just creating that sort of thing of you can't be what you can't see. So it was all about creating that beautiful space for, for these young women that were coming through. Um, so sort of tough backgrounds, not a lot of opportunity. Um, and they just, they, they just fabricated this amazing building with amazing opportunities for education, for network, and, and, and what that was really about was um, a, a, an equal playing field for all girls. Um, so it wasn't so much about, you know, as much as they had, it was a space for girls who were, for want of a better phrase, coming from an area of deprivation. It was more about just bringing everyone to the same level. So, you know, everyone was welcome um, and it was very much supported by a sort of a, a network of women who were already successful. So there was um, Rosario Dawson who's on the board, who's a, a Hollywood act, act, actor. Um, you know, they had uh, Tyra Banks help to sort of build the first um, build the building that they, they had a, a place called the T Zone, which was all about sort of women's building young women's confidence, and you know, so there was there was a huge sort of celebrity support around it as well. But the essence of it, it was you know, well, all young women should have the same opportunity to access networks. So when I discovered this um, organisation, and I, I was I was looking to volunteer and, and to help and. They just said as soon as we started chatting, you know, it was, it was actually a, um, it was my stepmom um, who was the, uh, the the partner of the organisation. She had an orphanage in Nepal, and so it was a sort of family connection. So um, the founders just said, you know, why don't you just do a girls' club in Glasgow and bring your girls here? So um, as I usually do, I thought I, I have no idea how we do that, but I'm going to do it. Yeah. So uh, sort of went <laughs> came back and actually got married during that time in New York. Came back back and forth thinking I'm going to be a, a transatlantic social entrepreneur it's like no you're not you're going to come back to Glasgow and you're going to put your heart and soul into this so um two years forward I did I came back and what that was about in Glasgow was about creating that pathway to opportunities for girls and young women in Glasgow to New York to anywhere else in the world um and again just with that sort of theme of you know connecting girls to opportunities and to other girls and to other networks within Glasgow and beyond so again all about a level playing field um, and where we found the place that we had the most impact was working within spaces where girls were affected by crisis or they were at risk of crisis so that sort of was a space of supported accommodation people who were experiencing homelessness they may have had issues with addictions they, they could have been um, convicted of a crime so we sort of found that that was a space that we we worked based um, and from there that sort of led and at, at that same time I actually got involved in technology 
technology, which sort of leads into where we are today. Um, and I worked for a startup for five years uh, during that time of, of the Girls Club being uh, in, underway. And um, so from, from that point, we actually, uh, we, we worked on a few different projects through the, the, the last few years, connecting communities using technology was one of them. Um, and here we are today, we're working um, with community justice. We're, we've just built an app for community justice for Glasgow City Council. Um, and we're now working with the amazing Dawn and Wise Women who can describe what, what we're doing. Um, but yeah, we're sort of, so we're, we're straddled between technology. So tech for change, um, connecting girls who are at risk of, girls and young women who are at risk of crisis um, or who are coming through crisis. So, but again, we're, we're open. We, we always get, um, we get asked, you know, can, can I bring my 14 year old along and can we do that? We're, we're open to everyone coming along to the girls club. And, and I guess that really is the beauty. It's not really about, oh, we're only going to serve underserved girls. We're only going to, we're, it's like, no, this is about everyone coming together. And as we said at the start with, with Laura, it was the first time that we've met Laura, isn't it? And, you know, just that power of networks, you know, and, yeah. and, and it not being about, oh, well, we came from the, the justice side of stuff. So that, you know, in the way that Heather and I had met was through justice, you know, and just the power of women coming together is, is really what we exist to sort of um, shine a light on. And, and I guess that sort of is so perfect for what we're talking about today. So... So that was a very long introduction, but I think it's all relevant. So yeah, I loved it. And I actually can't believe we've not met before this time, Amy. You two are like the same <laughs> no. person. <laughs> I know. How's the show to you? But you know what? Sometimes things happen just at the right time, don't they? And I can't imagine a more pertinent Absolutely. for us to be meeting to, to discuss. So thanks for having me. Oh, definitely. And I love any project that is brings people as an, an equaliser as well. So um and I think the ethos of your company and what you do is, you know, it fits perfectly into the campaign as well. So um, on to you, Don. introduce yourself and tell us a bit more about Wise Women. Sure, thank you very much for inviting us along. How exciting is this? Who would have thought 2022 was going to be so exciting for women's safety? It's, uh, it's actually mind blowing. Um, thank you so much for inviting us along and um, thank you for them that's watching as well. And I, I, we hope that everybody's uh, keeping well and we're moving into a new time in 2022 when we actually get to see one another face to face, never mind anything else. Um, wise Women, oh, what to say about Wise Women? Wise Women is an organisation that's funded through Glasgow City Council. Um, it was established in 1994. Um, and at that point, um, women struggled with some of the language round about some of the violence and abuse they were experiencing. So we just started to talk about um, kind of domestic abuse and there were still other issues that we hadn't acknowledged yet and there was other issues that we knew about like child sexual abuse but we, we didn't really like to speak about it and um, particularly women who were coming from that background and who tried to speak about it before and, and people hadn't listened. So we, what Wise Women was created to offer women an opportunity to talk about the harassment and abuse that they could talk about and that was in public spaces. Um, so we bring women into rooms, bring them together, share their experience and inevitably what would happen is women would talk about some of that more intimate violence, whether it was domestic abuse, whether it was child sexual abuse, um, exploitation through prostitution. So women started to talk about that as well. And the way that we've done that was we brought them together um, to do personal safety courses. So the personal safety courses continue, um, although it's been uh, restricted by COVID, as has the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. um, but the personal safety courses were about giving women defensive um, actions that would protect them at point of attack, but also that would build their confidence to be in public. So it wasn't about restricting their presence in public. So it wasn't about don't be wearing their phones and don't be drinking alcohol. It was very much about whatever circumstance you're in and how you respond to that is completely legitimate. Sometimes that's by not doing anything. Sometimes it's by being quite forthright and forward. Sometimes it's about how we use our voice before and afterwards. So do we report it? Are we speaking to our counsellors about it? Things like that. So it's the whole continuum of how we respond to violence and abuse around us. 
And from there, they was kind of discovered that often for women, it was confidence that was an issue as well. Because when it was intimate relationships where women were worried about how it would impact in the long-term relationship or where they knew they had to go home with the person, um, then it would, it, it would restrict what they could do. So confidence building was built into the programmes um, and we continue to do that today. Um, interestingly, women now have the language over the last few years, we have been talking about women do have the language now about domestic abuse, child sexual abuse, prostitution. Um, but um, so we were, we're going, maybe we need to look again at how we develop that, that understanding and, and work with people to do that. And when COVID hit, we've got really involved in strategic work. We've always done, done consultations with women, but strategic work's been a really, um, it's really opened up for us in the last two years. Um, where that's led us to, is um, we do believe we have an open door to push on. Um, we are getting engagement from Glasgow City Council. We know other councils are interested in women's safety. Some of the tragedies that's happened over the last year, two years, which we've really honed in on and partly I think to do with the pandemic, because these, these tragedies have happened for decades, centuries. Um, so we've really honed in and, and thought about it. And it's brought us to this place. And I think it's dead exciting that it is about bringing people together. It's about bringing women's voices to the forefront and women's safety particularly at a time where we're looking at how we restructure our cities to respond to environmental issues. It was really important that women are involved in that. And Glasgow is the place to be because Glasgow's got a huge history of um, feminist um, approaches to violence against women. Um, we've always been a city where um, we've focused in on the issues that, that women experience. Services were created by survivors for survivors. Um, and those, those have been supported by Glasgow City Council and have gradually built to where we are just now, where we're really lucky in Glasgow that we have numerous um, organisations that work on violence against women, not to the capacity they need to. So it is still a struggle for women to access them, but at least they're there, at least they're a starting point and it gives us somewhere to, when we're looking at these new technology um, approaches and how we bring women together, it's a real starting point for us to move into the next phase of how we approach these issues. So that's kind of wise women. Um, I, I hope that's enough to give you a flavour of what we do. And um, we're always evolving. So no doubt if you get us on in a year's two years time, we'll have something else <laughs> in our, our bag. Um, so that's where we are just now. Oh, amazing. It sounds like a fantastic, uh, so much going on. It sounds amazing. Okay. And again, it's just, it's perfect what you do and the ethos around it. It's just all... It all gels so well, doesn't it? Um, yeah. So, uh, Dawn, can you tell us a bit more about the project that you and Amy are working on? How it, tell us a bit about the history of how it came together um, and its purpose. Sure, thanks so much. Um, well, believe it or not, in the late 90s, wise women were out in shopping centres with bits of paper and pen um, asking women what their experience of safety was in Glasgow City. Um, so we've, we've, for a long time, we've had a history of engaging with women, both ourselves as wise women, but also other organisations um, in Glasgow uh, with, with women about their experience of harassment and abuse on the street. Reclaim the Night um, vigils were often held and, and, and marches were held in the city and surrounding areas. And we used to hone a lot of energy in round about that time um, that we would really engage with women to see what stopped them using the streets, what stopped them going out at night, um, and how we could how we could um, address that within the city. So we've been talking about this for a long time. Um, what happened was about a year ago, um, I had seen on my own Facebook, um, which I think is interesting in the context of this conversation, uh, on my own Facebook, Commonplace were doing a heat map or a survey map um, that you could pin a, a, a pin in, in the map and express um, some of your experiences in your communities. Now, the, the ones that were, that were shown as was like Islington, where it was a, a rounded approach to violence. So what kind of safety issues were around for anybody in the community? Um, what are particular things that could change? And really exciting work. So I was thinking this is perfect because we'd wanted to return to Wise Women's Safety Service for the many decades ago. We wanted to return to that in this new kind of era and, and really to look at um, with changes coming, how can, how can we influence that? 
So I had got in touch with Commonplace, who had done the heat map, and we had spoke about introducing it in Glasgow for a period of time to survey women's experiences. What I would emphasise is it was not to gather statistics necessarily, because we know this. Mm -hmm. We know what's happening. We know women's experiences. We've been gathering statistics for years. It was about how do we use the map to actually generate change within the city and elsewhere. So it was about the map being the starting point for us to have a body of evidence that reflected what we already knew, um, but that Glasgow City Council could then use to think about how we change the city for um, to improve women's safety. Um, so it needs to it needed to be wider than just the map. So the map was the starting point that women will feed into. Where, where what we're going to look at now is we're looking at focus groups. So if there's particular areas that the map, so for a lot of working class areas, there is very, very little space for women to meet in. So it's really difficult to put up posters. And um, it's really difficult to find spaces that women are there long enough to download the app from the QR code. Um, and that's that's been a real challenge. And it's been fascinating because there's other areas in Glasgow that there's ample um, facilities that we can display some of this information which I think gives us a sense of what it's like to be a, a, a woman in Glasgow experiencing particular difficulties. And it reflects the, the women who are coming into the Violence Against Women's Services like her own. Most women who come into our services are working class. They have very, very few options. It's not in their tool bag to pick up, move into another house. That's not what they're able to do. So that's why they're using our services. So it's vitally important that these, the services reflect that. And doing this app and trying to get women's voices, it was really interesting. It's a real struggle to get those voices through. Um, so we want to extend that out into focus groups. So there might be particular physical areas we want to go to. There might be communities of women that we want to target, um, such as women for black minority ethnic communities. We're also seeing quite a low turnout in women with disabilities. And we know that is a major issue in this city. Um, so we really want to look at some of these issues in more depth in focus groups. Um, so the idea was that what I wanted was some, you, women to be able to download the app onto their phone. Because if you see a poster, you see a thing on social media, the chances are you're sitting there, you're either chilling out in the pub with your friends, or you're sitting in the house watching Netflix, as we all do now. Um, so if you're either doing that, you're not necessarily in a point of crisis. You're not necessarily experiencing um, someone harassing you at that point. Um, so what I wanted was to be able to download the app onto the phone so that if, and this is what we don't want, but if women experienced harassment and abuse in the future, then they would have it on their phone that they could go to. It also means that women can return to it um, depending on if, if they experience that again, um, because we know that where women are vulnerable, they're more likely to be targeted again by abuse of men. So if you're living in quite a difficult area and um, where it's quite challenging and you're having to walk home every night, the chances are you're going to experience that more than once. So it's to encourage women to use it at multiple times. Um, Commonplace at that point couldn't do that for us, which was sad, but was brilliant because what happened then was we had support from uh, Glasgow Violence Against Women Partnership. Kirsty Hay, who's a coordinator for that, that partnership in Glasgow, um, then put me in touch with Amy, which has been absolutely an absolute joy because someone knows what they're doing with technology, which is nice. Um, but I think the intergenerational discussions we've been having, future projects about where we can bring women um, who are older together with women who are younger for peer support with IT, especially since devices have been um, distributed across during the pandemic. Um, so there's real opportunities in the future for that. But it's really blossomed the project to be much, much more than just about statistics. We know these statistics. This project is about change. Um, and it's so important that we get that message out here, which is we really appreciate being on today and for people um, 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 coming in through the live stream or, or watching it later. So I think that's the kind of history of the app. Amy will let you know if I've missed anything. Um, <laughs> but um, definitely Amy's the one to talk about the technology around about it. Um, and then I'm happy to take any questions afterwards. But thank you so much. Amazing. Thank you so much, Don. Sounds amazing. Do you know, and your enthusiasm for it as well is infectious. Um, it's funny when you were saying actually about the repeat areas, um, and I'm sure, I guess that's what this email test technology and how this will show, show that as well. But I remember I had this discussion with Laura. I remember being my drink being spiked in Glasgow 18 years ago, and the same place 
is still getting reported for drinks getting spiked and it just shows you that actually it's not recorded anywhere it's still happening and hopefully this is the sort of app that will make that more apparent as well so anyway amy over to you so tell us how this app works how people can use it and a bit more detail about the practicalities around it okay you set me up there dawn i don't I mean, <laughs> as much as we do technology i have never written a line of code in my life so <laughs> i struggle i struggle we have we've got some great tech minds that um are actually sort of former colleagues of mine from my tech startup days who've just sort of been along with me on my crazy ride with the girls club since the start really they were actually our first um, sponsor uh, the the tech startup that um, i worked for they they did an event in new york for tartan week um and we gave them use of the girls club in new york as their venue it was during all the independence referendum stuff so um they became our first sponsor and you know as, as things sort of unfolded we actually um ended up doing uh, work with them as we sort of move forward and um they're just amazing Stuart and Stuart like guys we're just we're, the, the women of, of Glasgow are, are so grateful to you right now for for the, the support that you've given us so um yeah so as, as Dawn said the um the the commonplace technology is essentially the the heart of of the app that, that i can give you a wee demo of in a second um but what that means is that the as dawn said it was it was accessible the the, the heat map was accessible via a, a web link a url um which is is great and it's a really powerful technology um but as dawn said you know we were just really conscious and, and, and aware that people weren't necessarily going to be knowing how to save that to their home screen. They weren't necessarily going to remember the URL. Um, so for the time that they really wanted to record those experiences, that you know, the, the people, what's that? Where was that? Oh, mm -hmm. it's in my browser. Oh, somebody sent it to me. Who? So for us, you know, is the girls' club being able to sort of step in as a, a tech for change um, facilitator? We were able to sort of pick that up and and really sort of deliver quite quickly on being able to turn the, the map into an app. Um, so I think that really funny to see that. Um, but yeah, the map is now living within our app. So we created it first as a progressive web app. Um, for any techies out there that, that would that be interested in the, the, this terminology, um, but we created it as a progressive web app first, which meant that it was accessed still through a, a, a URL, so it was accessed through www.womensafety.scot. Um, we're going to share all the information um, uh, towards the end, so don't worry, you don't need to write anything down. Um, but we, we, we were able to access it very quickly through womensafety.scot, which would take you out to what looked like a web browser. But when you are prompted, you can actually then add that to your home screen, which then turns it into a progressive web app. If you were on an Android, Android would automatically give you a prompt to say, do you want to add this to your home screen, which would then allow you to have sort of easier access to it. Um, and then we also have it as a native app now, so uh, we can access it through the Google Play Store and through the App Store as well. We can, we're going to give you a QR code that will let you download it. Um, but yeah, so we've been able to do that, and it's been it's been really exciting. And, and for us, you know, as a as a startup sort of um, sort of tech um uh, company i guess for third sector because that's our, our our aim is to really demystify um technology and, and sort of digital we're a digital agency for, for third sector and public sector so that when we do get these requests from um small chat small size charities um like wise women who have two two members of staff that say we want to build this technology so we can create change but we don't really have a very big budget you know that we can sort of step in at that point and not only help to provide the technology but also look at that sort of grassroots engagement um and all of those other things as don said that we're sort of discussing about how we can sort of move forward um with sort of partnership working linking out to the likes of this network as well you know and all of the the other sort of places that we can go when we do join forces together as a sort of community in Glasgow of women. Um, so yeah, so we're, we're, we're dead excited to be to be able to offer the technology, but also to be able to sort of, you know, bring uh, value to this this movement um, and uh, hopefully help things move move more quickly, as we say. Um, I guess just a wee bit of background on 
we are the girls club as as a girls organization um don obviously so sort of speaking from the the perspective of wise women and sort of talking a bit about you know the power that happens when we do that intergenerational work and when we do look at um where we came from and where we are now and as you've said there um around you know has has have things changed heather you know that the, the place that you had your drink spike 18 years ago is still the place that that's happening um and that and that this is not a new conversation don you know we've we've been in the streets we've we've had the waves of feminism we've had you know the conversations we've we've been here so many times and now where i get excited about where we are is that because of technology we can actually name it and because of the the move this wall i always think of them by the way the girls club always shied away from feminism as a title you know as an organization we was just like we just want to connect women and girls like we just and i'm a woman why do you do the girls club well i'm a woman and i know that we have different needs and you know that's why we did it so we always we, we always tried not to get too involved in any of the sort of you know taking a stance about anything we just wanted to get stuff done um and I feel like now with technology and the, the, the way that the universe has sort of sort of brought us all together is a time when the girls clubs actually just can hit, you know, we're, we're, we've got a big finger pointing at us going, no, you cannot stay silent anymore. Like you are, you know, whatever you consider to be feminist, um, the, you, you are a woman. This is a girls organisation and there is a huge issue here right now. And as, as we've said, you know, these waves of you know, feminism that have happened over the years. Um, I always think of it as a wall. Um, it's like when we look back to the suffragettes, when we look back to where we were, um, when we couldn't vote, when we look back to, it's not even that long ago when you think of like the, where we were. Um, and it's like every time we move forward, um, and, and it's like, you sort of think, do we get, where, where are we getting? We are, well, of course we're moving forward. Um, but when we think about sexual harassment and sexual abuse and is that moving forward and that I think really is the final frontier for us as women um, that we're now at this place of, of saying well you know these these waves and all the all of the ways that women have found freedom and that have been we've been liberated in so many ways um, and we're now at this final for me it's the final frontier you know in technology being able to sort of step into that at a time when um you know women have never been more free um there's so much more there and it's not for this this actual um this this talk this 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 call but the you know the, the role of the porn industry is done and i have had so many conversations about this there's a whole other conversation to be had but where we are as women with freedom, with sexual liberation, with all of this freedom that we have to be who we want to be. The fear for me as a woman who runs an organisation that supports girls and young women that are coming through this wave right now is what we see online and what we see on social media and what we see and what we hear of, you know, Dawn was telling me the other day, you've got a 15 or 16 year old daughter, you know, having to have, when we were, when we were younger, our parents were talking to us about sex education, you know, you know, what happens and it's all right. You know, Dawn's now having to have, to have conversations with a 15 year old daughter about strangulation and, you know, being spat on uh, when you're having, yeah. if you have sex and you're spat on, this is not normal. These are not, this isn't what you should think of as normal because when young child, when young um, people are watching porn as their introduction to sex, these are things that are normal, you know, so having to have those conversations now with our young women is, is absolutely gobsmacking because, you know, as much as we're moving forward with, with freedom and, and liberation, when we're having that at the core of what young women understand to be healthy sex practice, um, you know, and how that then feeds into what we're talking about with this narrative of violence against women and what is normalised, you know, this is just, this is normalised. So for us, it's really, you know, that 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 point in the conversation that, that Don and I are talking about, you know, looking to, to focus more towards young women to say, you know, at what point did I realise that, you know, I had been sexually harassed as a young woman because it actually took me a long time to recognise the points in my life that had been not okay. You know, there's been so many scenarios and I'm sure everyone has that where you actually look back and you go, I didn't know how to say no to that. 
Yeah. I didn't know that that wasn't okay. I didn't understand that that I was being sexualized, that I was being objectified, that I was that 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 wasn't a compliment, you know. Mm-hmm. And for it to reach yeah. that point now of being forty and to say, oh well, like where where are we and how are young women coming through this and where do they where how do we protect them from that um, at the at the point that we are right now? So um, yeah, I feel like technology can play such a huge part in that and I guess um, that's where with the girls club we're we're super passionate about how we can do the intergenerational stuff as well and how we can sort of bring all of the all of those sort of efforts over the years and over the the um the movements together um so yes without further ado I can show you Amy I just have to say I feel like you've read our mind yeah this is exactly what I was going to say everything you've just mentioned there pretty much covers our 12 months worth of topics so we'll go on to that at the end I think we'll need to have Uh, people on each panel uh, just to, to continue those discussions and also what you were saying on feminism as well Amy because as a as a brand the GGC has been exactly as you described your GGC because I think we've all had our own stories and history with feminism and I've been doing a lot of research on it recently because I'm going to rebrand the 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 clubs that I've got and they've got such an influence from the kind of feminist waves Mm -hmm. and we've gone through the like you say the history of you know doing it standing up for each other like having them getting the vote and then you know shying away from wearing anything that's provocative because we're not objectifying ourselves and then being super provocative because that's what we want to be and then hearing that actually feminism is a dirty word probably from the patriarchy and you've had this kind of it has been a wave hasn't it and obviously it's been clouded with a lot of you know negativity there's been a lot of racism and different things going on in each of the waves but I absolutely resonate with what you're saying and this is this is all of our collective time to bring about a new wave, a new frontier, to deal with all these really hard issues because actually these are some of the last things that we need to be very vocal about. And yes, technology, this is is what is the difference between each of the different waves. We've now got the ability to connect with women all around the world, which is what you're obviously doing um, right now. And, you know, and Dawn, what you were saying about wise women, connecting women in Glasgow, you know, helping them to talk about different things that they've been through and creating this app it's just it sounds amazing so let's let's have a wee let's have a wee look at it then yeah let me show you thanks laura um let me just share my screen there we go so here we are um just to get this one So this is a progressive web app that we're looking at just now, which is not a lot of difference, um, but there is the native app, which is a slightly different top, the, the top of it. Um, but what we're looking at here is the sort of main page. So you can see here we've got the sort of joint conversation. We've got the wee disclaimer here as well. And just to sort of highlight this as well, that it's really important that this isn't a, a place to record an incidents that have happened in your home. Um, so just to sort of make that really clear that it is for public spaces so you know but that can be um, you know hospitality venues clubs whatever you you feel that is um, important so if I tap on the map itself we can just look at Glasgow for the moment so we've just looked at the whole city you can see here as well as Dawn was so I mentioned earlier on, we're, we're, we're not really reaching the east of, of Glasgow. Mm-hmm. Um, so if there's anyone out there that's sort of networked in the east, we would really love it. You know, we can sort of give you the, the run through on how we can um, get everyone involved. But just to sort of mention that just now in case I forget that, you know, the east end is, is a place that, you know, we really would love to sort of see obviously we wouldn't we'd love that we wouldn't see anything on there but we actually had um we, we do some work with some uh, local housing associations as well in the north of the city in the northeast and we were contacted by rate crisis to say you know we're not getting any referrals in Postal Park and Springburn um so you know we're, we really need to find the ways to make sure that people know that we exist and you know that they can reach out to us um so yeah we hope that we can by by doing these sorts of events we can find find those networks so you'll see here there is um there's a hot spot 
we can see here, which is Queen's Park, probably no surprise there. Um, you can see here we've got, I can just go in and have a look at some of the comments. And um, that's a red, so that means they're feeling very unsafe. So um, they're in the street, they're walking there, it's a travel route, um, known for violence. So you can just see what, what the sort of comments are there. And of course, the horrible um, incident with Moira yeah. and Jones. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's kind of quite hard hitting, I guess. And, and you know, to see it at, like that, I think just sort of, you know, um, so concentrated in that area, again, just sort of telling us what we know, as Don said, you know, there's nothing, there isn't any, any news here. It's not a, a shock. Um, we go up to Mary Hill, for example, this is where I live. Um, and you'll see here, which is really interesting, and it's actually as we just continue having these conversations and sort of going about our, our daily sort of business with our own organisations. Don and I are having really interesting conversations based off the back of what we're seeing on the app. So, for example, we can see here the Stockingfield Aqueduct, which is a place um, I live just along the road here, and it's a a private estate that I live on. It's, it's nothing fancy, but it, it's um, it's it's a wee sort of private place, it, right? Sort of in, on the corner there, and you can see here we're, we've got a few comments. It's it's right beside the canal. You can see there's a few comments along that road, which is a very dark road. And what I always say when I talk about where I live, you know, it's, it's lovely. So it's, it's got a nice sort of view of the canal. And um, you would not live here without a car that you just wouldn't and then you know and, it, and it's going back to that thing that we've just said there you know sort of normalizing these things of going oh, you only live here without a car and it's like oh that's because you're a woman um and what was really interesting before we started doing this project was that um this stocking field aqueduct here was a is a 12 million pounds bridge project has just been um almost completed so they did community consultation on it and said, yeah, we want a bridge, we want more active travel. Um, we want people, there's a lot of bikes going along this, this route. We want to connect these, these areas at the back end here with Shuna Street. And we want to make sure that people can sort of get, get access to the canals as well. So they did all of that. Um, and, and what was happening in the conversations behind the scenes when that was also coming about, through my network and through some of the local um, organizations was you know and it was one that sort of did a buggy walk they they, they supported um, parents it was a parents um, charity they said you know we we just would not walk on the canal like no women that i know would walk on the canal and they you know for them to have that built that 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 new bridge is amazing but there's a huge issue when you're you're doing that but actually there's still huge issues with lighting um, along there. So as you see, there's four comments here. If I just look at one of them, um, again, a lot, of, a lot of people running on the canal, um, more lighting, you know, it's well known for drinking. So we're kind of seeing all these sorts of comments. And what happened um, during one of my meetings this week was that I was, talking about this space um, with a, another local organisation. And it turned out that they were really good friends with the woman who is in charge of the, I think it's the community the community liaison for the um, aqueduct. So the, the Sustrans have sort of um, been really involved in that. And, you know, she says that I, I can introduce you because like this is the information that they want to hear. Like they are looking actively to hear that information. So, you know, it's really interesting that, you know, Austin, now, you know yeah. Yeah, we're sort of like honing in on, you know the the consultation that's happened already but the consult the questions were never asked and that's what's really interesting i think about this is that you know as much as they're doing community engagement and community consultation when they're doing building work and i guess at the heart of what we're doing as well as so, but we, were we considering active travel for women were we considering that a woman might not want to get a bike and she might not want to help to save the planet because really she's putting her safety first and mm -hmm. um, you know and yep. that's something that hadn't even occurred to to me um, until COP26 was, you know, banging the drum to us all to get on your bike and I've got a bike. And then it, it was only at that point that I, it dawned on me and thinking, I do want to be more active and I do want, but I wouldn't go on my bike because I'm scared on that canal. So, you know, it's, it's I think it's like a, it, that, that whole thing about getting your needs met 
um, and women's safety being at the, at the top of it for women um, and how we haven't really thought too deeply about that at a community planning level. Um, so we're dead excited that, that we can finally sort of start making those sort of connections through this um, type of technology. So you can see here, just this is how you would actually make a comment on the app as well. Um, it's kind of like a dropping up in on your Google map or whatever. Um, so you just do that and then you can just go through. Um, and it's quite easy to use, isn't it, to be able to yeah. select the boxes rather than type everything? Because I think that's what can put you off, isn't it? If there's too much typing, too many questions. Mm -hmm. Well, I can use it, Heather, so we're, we're, we're going <laughs> We're all good, we're all good. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, and then, sorry. So John and Amy, how often then, so this is obviously amazing, you're going to get, like you said, the evidence of like women's experiences throughout Glasgow. So do you have like a time frame within you would take it to to somebody, you know, someone like the police and say, look, here's the evidence. Would, you, would that be like a regular thing or is there like a time frame on yeah. sort of collating all this data? Yeah, well, we're, we're actually really fortunate time time wise. Um, Wise Women's involved in an organized, uh, sorry, a working group called the Women's Work Stream. And it's came from the Social Recovery Task Force that's dealing with coming out of COVID basically for the city. Um, the work stream exists because we recognised, ironically, that there was no evidence specific to women um, in Glasgow and limited ev evidence nationally. So that's what the work stream's there for. We're having an event um, around about International Women's Day. So we're really fortunate because the, the map stops on the 1st of March. Mm -hmm. um, International Women's Day is the 8th of March, um, but we're looking at the event possibly on the 9th, um, and we will be showing our initial findings there. Now, mm -hmm. that is going to be targeted at key decision makers in the city. So mm -hmm. we're really fortunate with the time and um, that we'll be able to straight away um, hit some of these um, working groups. So I include things like police, education, social work, uh, councillors, elected councillors, we've got an, a local election coming up that I'm sure everyone's dying to put their cross in a box. Um, but to, <laughs> we will be using all of these um, timely things to, to promote the initial findings coming out and beyond. Um, what's great is we have got an open door. Um, Glasgow City Council is really engaged with us. The councillors are really interested in moving us forward. There's a cross-party motion put in to the Parliament before recess at Christmas and they committed to uh, making streets safer as I say saying it and doing it is two different things um, but that's up to us and, and when I say us I don't mean wise women in uh, Glasgow Girls Club it's up to all women to, to, yeah. to stand up and really support the voices of those in decision making positions to to make the change and to put pressure on those that, that aren't ready to listen to women yet so yeah we've got loads of opportunities Laura and, and but as I say fortunate that we've in this, straight away we've got um, opportunities to to look creatively about how we, we persuade decision makers. Brilliant. That's amazing. So yeah. I can see you've got this sort of uh, press pack there as well. So what we can do is um, if anyone that's watching wants to get involved, find out more information, be able to share it in your platforms, then mm -hmm. we'll put Amy and Dawn's details to get in touch um, for more information. Um, and we can also put up how you can download that, where you can find it. So it's all easy to find just in the chat from this conversation. That's great, Heather. The other thing we were thinking, Heather, as well, is um, this is a real opportunity as well to bring women together. Mm -hmm. And any young woman who's watching this, um, don't overestimate the confidence and the skills of your older generational of, of women in your family and your friends and your work colleagues and really it would be great if young women could reach out and really help um, older women engage with us because and I speak as an older woman um, because um, if we're really really struggling in working class areas to get spaces which is another issue that we're, we're going to be looking at but spaces where women can gather if women can reach out to one another um, and across generations that that would be it would actually absolutely help us movement to move forward and it would give us so many more voices to, to take to Glasgow City Council. Fantastic. Yeah. We're actually involved quite a lot of networking groups as well, of varying yeah. ages, yeah. so we'll, uh, we'll sure spread the word Fantastic. as well. 100%. Laura, have you got any more questions? Or sh I think we really did cover so it. Yeah, we covered it all <laughs> off. That was so... Brilliant. Great to see how that works. I'll definitely be going and getting it downloaded and 
and shouting about it through the GGC community because it is, it is a chance to have your voice and, and to, like you say, go to key decision makers and say, look, here's the hotspots in Glasgow. What's what's going to be done about it? So this okay. is brilliant. What a brilliant collaboration. Yeah. So, Amy, is this is a QR code that people can download the yes. app, yeah? I'm going to do it right now. So you can either go to www.womensafety.scot if yeah. you just want to do the progressive web app, or if you want to download it as a native app, you can scan the QR code, which will take you to your own browser, to your own um, app store, whether you're on Android or an iPhone. Right, that's it. Quick and easy. I have downloaded it. Yeah, brilliant. It's done. Um, Perfect. So what we'll do as well is we'll put this across our social channels regularly um, while the campaign still uh, running up till the 1st of March as well. Fantastic. That's brilliant. Mm -hmm. And That's we've brilliant. What, what I've done as well, because I'm quite um, a philistine when it comes to things like this, I've downloaded the image onto my phone so that when I'm meeting women, I can go with that. There's a QR code. You know, share, yes. I'm sure it with as many women as I meet as possible. So it'd be great. Really Perfect. appreciate any support. Let's make this a movement. That's kind of the idea behind it, isn't it? Excellent. So we'll get that QR code off you, Amy, as well, and we can get that up and about. Um, so thank you so much, Amy and Don. I think it's a really exciting project, and we'll definitely be spreading the word on that. And I can't wait to see the outcome of it as well. It'll be, it'll be really interesting. I think, I guess as well, you can learn from the places that are maybe green or people feel safe, or what is it about those spaces that can be implemented in there? The red areas as well. So yeah, yeah. we will. It would not be nice actually to catch up with you guys once it's done, and it's look fantastic. at what the outcome is. Yeah, um, yeah a review that would be brilliant. That so would be that would be really good. And and as well, we are going to be moving forward with uh, future campaigns that will focus um, on the voices of men and yeah. other voices, so that you know we can look at you know how everyone can sort of be involved in the, the outcomes that we want to see, which is ultimately no, no violence. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, you I, know, think, I think, yeah. And I think the beauty of starting with this one is though that women's voices at the centre. Yeah. And women, yeah. women have been saying for years what needs to be done. It's just they've been getting ignored. I think the technology that you bring to the table makes that di more difficult. Um, and that's exciting. Um, yeah. But certainly we want women's voices at the centre. It's, it's, they know... And, and women of particular communities know their particular needs um, mm -hmm. and we need, to, we need to hear those voices and for them to be in the decision-making positions. It's not just about women coming forward and telling their lived experience and then people in fancy rooms decide whether or not it's relevant to their policy. It's about women actually being involved in the decision-making round about that policy. And that, that's the only way we're going to move forward. Exciting, because we can. Um, there's loads of skills. Every, every woman's got a, a, an experience and an opinion on these matters. They need to be heard, and that's that's the key bit. Totally agree. Yes. Yes. So this leads on well then to um, just finishing up this discussion, but um, we're going to go through what our subjects are going to be for the discussions going forward for the year. And actually, I think we've probably touched on every single one in this conversation. <laughs> So it's quite reassuring to know we've probably got these right. Mm -hmm. um, and we do, like, as we go through these, we do know that we cannot, we've discovered we can't even cover every subject in a year. We can't go and delve deep enough into every single uh, subject in a one or two hour panel event once a month. Um, and when we were making the subjects, we did realise that actually quite a lot of crossover. There's so many sub subtopics that come into these as well. So um, our ask is when we're going through these, if you want to be involved as an individual, as an organization, a company, um, you, as a campaign, um, or maybe just within your work, whatever you do is relevant, or you've got a story to tell, or just a really strong opinion on it, then we are looking for everyone to get involved and it is, you know, the public as well. So. Let me go through these and um, yeah, because I've touched on loads of them. So in February the 18th, our panel event is going to be focusing on children and youth. Um, how, when and what do we teach them? So every single discussion we have it always comes back to youth and at what point do we tell them? Um, Don, you've got a teenage daughter, I've got a 10 year old. Laura's got a two, she, we bell rose two now. Two, yeah. yeah, 
and like at 10 I'm like oh gosh what do I tell her you know you don't want to be naive but you do at the same time so um yeah yeah, we're going to be looking into that and when we're talking about children we covered we'll cover um the availability of porn at a young age as well I don't know if anyone else has watched um the program about rape culture by Zara McDermott on BBC but it was really interesting um speaking to teenagers bit terrifying but an eye-opener and interesting nonetheless so yeah children and youth will be February um in March the 18th um we're going a little bit different we're going to be doing the success of women just with it being international women's day and month um, in March we're going to be speaking to um a group of inspirational women um but not just about them but looking at through the history um, particularly through feminism as well, people that have made a change and have overcome um, potential safety issues um, to make a difference. So that will be March. Into April the 22nd, it's all about perception. So men's perception on women, women's perception on men, um, historical bias, and we'll be touching heavily on feminism in there as well. So looking at where where the violence comes from. And a lot of it will be historical issues that keep coming up. So that'll be April. Let me get into some real meaty subjects, May, June, July, which are gonna push the boundaries a little bit, but I think they have to be, we've all agreed they have to be addressed. So on Friday the 20th of May, we're looking into pornography. So the unrealistic expectations, the ease of it, the um, and the outcome of that. And again, you get your crossover of youth coming into it, and then um yeah, like the um yeah, there's there's loads that'll come out of that, I think. Mm-hmm. Then into June, we're talking about consent um, and everything that comes around consent, and I think that will be quite um relevant after the pornography subject as well. July, we're talking about sex workers. Um, Into August, we go on to the queer perspective. So bringing in all your different gender um, roles and again, the perceptions in there as well. In September, it's going to be women's safety campaigns. So looking at all the campaigns that are going on, we've left this till much later in the year because we feel that we'll be able to meet lots of people, get lots of contacts through the year and be able to bring all the big campaigns together for a discussion really starts to gel the purpose in this campaign about it being a collaboration running up to the big event at the end of the year. October, we want a men's panel. Um, So we're already speaking to the likes of Clyde One who could potentially get us a, a male host for it. And it'll just be a men's panel. We tried to do this in December. Um, it was too soon. We didn't have enough, maybe enough uh, voice at that point. So we're hoping by October we'll have gathered enough enough men along the way that they'll be happy to do a men's panel without feeling intimidated. And hopefully there'll be enough noise before the campaign's coming together by then that we can pull that one off because I think it is important and we've discussed this well men are a lot of the issue in women's safety it doesn't mean that every man condones this or are you know the problem um but they need to get into the subject they need to talk about it they need to get involved um so that's our aim in october we've given ourselves time to work up to that panel so any guys out there do want you involved in november we're not going to take guests on it's going to be the So What But What If board or committees. There's myself, Laura Ashley, and we've got Emily and Maddie in the background as well. So we're gonna be doing a review over the whole year about what we found and what we're gonna put into the report and talking about the event in December as well. So that will be bringing everything together. And then, like I said, we're gonna finish up by bringing everybody that's been involved, plus anyone else that wants to come along to our main event that will be on Friday the 9th of December. So that is our plan for the year ahead. Um, We have lots of uh, other things that will be going on outside of the main events that will come as as it develops. And we are still looking at 
going through all funding processes and all the joys that come behind the scenes. Um, but it's a big project and we want as many people as possible to be involved. So please, if any of those subjects stand out to you, then I'll put our email address uh, again in the chat after this and drop us an email, you get involved in it. Um, we're always looking to learn more and see different perspectives as well. So we're also open to um, any resources you have. You know, if you, if you see an article, you see a TV programme, you think actually that's really useful, that's got a different view on it, send us them as well. We have a resource file that we are gathering for us all to learn as well. Have I covered everything, Laura? Yes, very Good. well as well. <laughs> Excellent. So I've got my master's spreadsheet. Thank goodness, because you'll have no hair by the end of the year. If there's any more. <laughs> uh, so ladies, thank you so much for um, taking part in our first panel of this massive project we've created ourselves. Um, we will 100% be supporting what you're doing and keeping in touch. And whether you like it or not, since you actually mentioned all our subjects, you will be getting involved with <laughs> some other <laughs> panel events. Um, the invites. <laughs> yeah, I've actually made a list of stuff for people as well that actually I'm going to introduce you to that can help spread the word as, to, as well. So you've created yourself some homework from this panel event too. <laughs> um, but thank you so much. Um, thank you. Thank and we will see you all on the 18th of February for our next panel event. Thanks Lovely. so much, everyone. Thank you so much for having us. And our what if? The, 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 yes. The what if? Oh, yes. yes. I used to get something. So, I yes. Mean, what if we never had to have another conversation like this ever again? Yes. Yeah. Dawn, your what if? If you could have a positive outcome in case of a so what, give us a what if. I need to keep it tight. Um, what if we were able to reflect on our experiences and where our opinions come from and we were open to hearing other people's? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Let's, let's listen to one another. We've been ignored for too long. We've got to stop ignoring each other. Love it. Thanks, Dawn. <laughs> Thank you saying? so much. Thanks very much. Bye. 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 That's fab. That's the live stream stop.